Hi everyone, it is February 1, 2019, one month into 2019. Yeah, it has gone fast. Well, uh, did you hear about a sleeping illness? An entire town with so many of the residents just falling asleep? This was back in 2015. The article was posted in 2015. This started in this town in Kakistan, Kalachi is the name of the town, in 2010. But it then began to really affect the residents in 2013. A sleeping illness. The village that fell asleep. Wow, and it's a mystery. It's a mystery. They did find out what the mystery is, but I think they're cause is not quite right. For the last two years, the residents of Kalachi have been falling into unexplained bouts of sleep, sometimes for weeks at a time. With no cause yet identified, Johanna Lillis meets the victims resisting relocation by the authorities. Ah, they want to relocate the, the residents of this town, yet they don't even know what the cause is that is creating symptoms in residents like this resident. He was on his way to do errands. He was driving to the nearest town, but he never arrived. His brain switched off. That's it. I don't remember. So they're calling this the sleeping sickness that's been plaguing Kalachi, a remote village about 300 miles west of the country's capital, Astana. Mystery illness has sent residents into comas, sometimes lasting days on end. This guy that went to the town to do errands, he fell asleep on the 28th of August and came to on the 2nd of September. Uh, he woke up in a hospital. Hmm. His wife was with him. She didn't fall asleep. Uh, the first time he fell asleep, it was for three days. After this slumber, my blood pressure started going up for no reason. He had headaches. That's headaches, not the word. Um, for six weeks, I didn't know where to put myself. It strongly affects your mentality. I'm very on edge. So that had been going on, well, according to mainstream media, from 2013 to 2015, two years, residents falling into comas, suffering debilitating symptoms like dizziness, nausea, blinding headaches, memory loss. Hmm, what is going on here? Well, doctors and scientists and sleep disorder experts, they were baffled, they couldn't figure it out, they did so many tests. Uh, levels of radiation, carbon monoxide, radon, a buildup of heavy metal salts, which can be toxic. What was going on in the sleepiest village in Pakistan? Um, they don't have the results of the study. That was back in 2015. The residents were all in fear of falling asleep, but the authorities, their solution, moved the villagers out of Kalachi to prevent further exposure. But exposure to what? They don't know. Don't you think that that is a drastic solution to a problem uh, they don't know the cause of? Hmm. Well, I'm going to present what I think is going on here. Uh, can't state it definitively, but looking into it, I don't know. Hmm. So they already, uh, back in 2015, had resettled around 100 residents. There were 425 residents still living in the village. It was a voluntary resettlement. Many of the residents did not want to go. Uh, I don't want to go anywhere. Why should I go? I've been here for 40 years. I'm going to die here. His wife, uh, also defiant. Interesting how the Guardian described it. You're defiant. You have um, what is that? Psychiatric disorder. Um, God, I can't remember. But it's a defiant disorder. Um, so 
these residents, they don't want to go. Where are they going to send me? What's awaiting for me there? Uh, it, it, you know, this, uh, this moving about shuffling around the population, creating economic zones and impoverishing other areas of, well, just the United States, speaking of the United States, that's one way they can move people out of areas where they have lived their entire life. You become rooted and grounded where you um, have lived. When that is upset and you have to resettle, it shakes up everything. It leaves you very vulnerable. And a lot of people are rooted to where they have grown up, where they have lived uh, pretty much their entire life. So leaving those places, it's very, very difficult. And once you do, you cannot get your old self back. So yeah, the authorities opening dialogue with the residents, um, many opposed to leaving. They say it affects the brain. They say it affects, uh, it gives people headaches. But our headache now is where were we being resettled? It's scary. It really presents a lot of stress. So another article uh, coming very soon after this one. So this one was posted uh, March 2015. This in The Guardian as well. July 2015. Ah, they got it solved. They got it solved. Wow. So it started back in 2013. All right. In 2015, July, they know the cause. Good. So get rid of what is causing all of these symptoms and the people don't have to move, right? Uh, uh, uh. Nope. Evacuating everyone. So villages, villagers, would fall asleep suddenly, even while walking, wake up with memory loss, grogginess, weakness, headaches. Some fell a uh, victim more than half a dozen times, with sufferers sleeping up to six days at a time. The sick person appears to be conscious and can even walk. But all the same, he then falls into a deep sleep and snores. When they wake him up, the person remembers absolutely nothing. It affects both young and old, children dropping off to sleep in school. Um, some reported nightmarish hallucinations and even pets and animals were affected. One resident's cat went stupid just one day out of the blue, began meowing, attacking walls, furniture. The family dog fell asleep, uh, then snored like a human until lunchtime, um, but didn't care to even eat when the cat woke up. So at first they thought the patients were suffering the after effects of counterfeit vodka. Really? Oh, did the cat engage in a couple of shots? And that's what made the cat go stupid? No. All right. But as the epidemic grew, they began diagnosing people with encephalopathy. 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 Wow, Carol. Encephalopathy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. My brain. Yeah, it's of uh, an unknown origin. It's a generic term for brain illness. Sleep disorder experts couldn't figure it out, but listen to this. Oh my God. All right. Um, they thought it could be mass psychosis. Similar to the Bin Laden itch, a psychosomatic rash that afflict, uh, afflicted children in the United States as fears of terrorist attacks peaked in 2002. Did you ever hear of the Bin Laden itch? I, I've not heard of that. Uh, children developing a rash. Wow. Uh, because they feared terrorist attacks. Mm. Well, children often get scared of certain things. Terrorists yeah, attack like that could be really pretty um, traumatizing. But even traumatized kids living in a 
uh, in an environment with a lot of abuse and everything, they don't develop rashes, though some could, I suppose. Um, anyway, you read these things and you're like, what? But the cause lies in uranium mines. Now, this uranium mines, or these mines, in this area of Kakasan were discovered by the Soviets during World War II. They were closed, I believe, in 1999. And, well, really 2010 is when one resident would experience some symptoms. But 2013, the onset of symptoms in many residents started 2013 and it went on to 2015. The mine was closed in 1999. Now they're claiming it was the mines. Uh, it concluded, the, these experts concluded that it was caused by heightened levels of carbon monoxide and hydro hydrocarbons in the air. For some reason, I guess, that it just started in, like, in large quantities in 2013. Even though the mine, when it was operating, when it had closed, for years after it closed, nothing happened. Ah, okay. Uranium mines closed at times a concentration of carbon monoxide occurs there. The oxygen in the air is reduced accordingly, which is the real reason for the sleeping sickness in these villages. Evacuations of the two villages has begun, with authorities reported, reportedly relocating 68 of 223 families so far. Carbon monoxide poisoning uh, doesn't make cats attack walls and furniture. Uh, doesn't put people into a sleep or a coma for six days and then they come out of it. Um, it builds up, carbon monoxide can build up in your bloodstream, but they have tests to determine whether or not there's a buildup of carbon monoxide in your bloodstream. And it causes tissue damage. It can cause uh, weakness. It can cause symptoms. But some of these symptoms, uh-uh. No. It does not relate to carbon monoxide. You know, here's another article. This was 2018, posted 2018. All right, so in 2013, um, victims would start to slur their words, sway their bodies, and see in double vision before falling into a deep sleep that could last days. They had brief moments of blurry consciousness. They came out of their sleep to eat, go to the bathroom, smoke, um, but then return to their comatose state. That does not sound like carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, first person to fall ill was a middle-aged woman, 2010. She was working at a market when she suddenly was overcome with intense drowsiness. Four days later, she woke up in a hospital. She was told she had a stroke. Five women, then next, five women fell ill at once. Um, there was even an incident involving an animal, the animal, the cat, that went crazy. Um, Kalachi was not the only place touched by this inexplicable sleeping sickness. Citizens of a neighboring town similarly noticed an uptake in a mysterious condition that hit victims with an overwhelming urge to sleep. It's now a ghost town. Uh, it once was the home to the miners of nearby uranium mines, which had been left abandoned following the fall of the Soviet Union in the 1990s. Over the next few years, more than 140 incidents were reported between the two towns. In some cases, a patient would fall ill with sleeping sickness multiple times. 
When someone is experiencing carbon monoxide poisoning, it is not that hard to detect. Uh, so at first, all of their tests, well, it got them to a dead end. We don't know what it is. Radiation levels were measured in over 7,000 homes, only for them to find that concentrations of radioactive substances were too low to create any kind of problem. The symptoms were all wrong. Radiation poisoning causes cancer and organ damage. It doesn't cause people to fall down unconscious uh, suddenly. But as it turns out, it did have to do with the mines. Ah, okay. Did they need to come up with a cause to get those people out? I think so. Here, uh, it states, not everyone was persuaded by the carbon monoxide theory. Not least because the mines hadn't been active since the early 90s, and carbon monoxide is usually the product of combustion. Why was the sleeping sickness affecting residents two decades on? Close to two decades on. Yeah, several questions left unanswered. I just want to point out, okay, effects of microwave radiation on brain energy. The brain is one of the most sensitive target organs for microwave radiation, where mitochondrial injury occurs early and more severely than in other organs. Yeah, the brain always requires a high rate of oxygen and energy consumption to maintain regular functions. Therefore, this organ is sensitive to non-infectious stimuli such as ionizing radiation and hypoxia. I also want to remind you a video that I posted on this chart, which I will tell you in a second, but here 5G millimeter spectrum. The propagation effects oxygen absorption in atmosphere at maximum. Wow. So they can use microwaves and millimeter waves, radar even, to affect oxygen in the atmosphere, millimeter waves, which is 5G, which they're bringing to all of us. Well, they can use those uh, frequencies to literally deplete the atmosphere of oxygen. And then you're walking around. Well, if it's a depletion, you ain't walking around. But if it's a slow pull out of oxygen, what happens? You will feel very drowsy. You'll have a myriad, just myriad symptoms, weakness, drowsy, mental dysfunction, uh, cognitive effects, a, a whole lot. So what is this? This is the frequency spectrum. This was sent to me by a subscriber and it is a chart that was used back in 1963, 1968, I'm sorry. It was part of the publication of the Joint Technical Advisory Committee, Spectrum Engineering, The Key to Progress, March 1968, General Electric and well, this frequency spectrum chart illustrates man's and nature's activity in the use of electromagnetic energy, energy um, showing man's use and natural phenomena in simple terms of a common denominator frequency and the incidences of such side effects which have been entered on the chart indicate frequencies at which experiments have been performed. Yeah, great. Okay, so uh, you had the experiments done and they learned that they could literally take oxygen from the atmosphere, leaving a whole lot of people. Well, depending on the uh, intensity of the 
millimeter way of use. They could knock school children out, residents of town out, and yes, the Soviets, the Russians were all on it. And in fact, the Soviets and the United States, they worked together exchanging the data on experiments that both countries were conducting. Okay, so what is this? Dozens of dying villages in northern Pakistan to be liquidated. Oh my god. Yeah, dying villages. They're getting rid of them. They won't even be on the map. Dozens of depopulated villages in a Pakistan province bordering Russia, Russia will be liquidated and their residents move to larger towns. Ah, uh -huh, larger towns. 38 villages with a population of 10 or less will no longer officially exist and their residents will be relocated to more developed towns and villages across the region. And this authority figure stated that the shift would create jobs, but she didn't explain how. More people there are in district centers and bigger settlements. Well, there'll be jobs there. Oh, okay. Um, she also said the government will allocate budget funds for infrastructure development only in economically promising population centers. And that is the Russian authorities. So, one of those towns was Kalachi. Liquidated. Liquidated. Why? Huh. Implementation of Sustainable Development Goals in BRICS countries. BRICS, the R, Russia. So, let's see. Um, let me just bring you to... Hang on. This, uh, and I will link below to everything, but wow, what is this? This is world mega regions, the world's 21 mega regions. Huh, look at this the mega regions in Russia, right here. The yellow, the, these little dots are mega regions. This is the reshaping of the world. Uh, the dictates of the United Nations, Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, sustainable goals. You cannot sustain the planet anymore if you have people living in rural areas. So you got to get rid of them and put them into these mega regions. It's all to enslave the world's population because once you have people in these small, um, smart, urban cities, you have very easy control over that population. You do not have easy control over a population that is just spread all over the planet. So, what do we have here? Mega regions, none in Pakistan. None. This is Pakistan. You have them the border of Pakistan, well, the Russian border, right inside Russia, nowhere in Pakistan. They are getting rid of the people in Pakistan. Um, this is Pakistan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan. Menistan, Turkish Menistan, I'm sorry if we're not pronouncing it, uh, pr pronunciating that correctly, but this is the area that is being liquidated right here. So I don't think it was carbon monoxide. I think that they were using frequencies to cause those symptoms to then come in and evacuate and relocate the residents. Yes. Uh, the world's countries are working together for the United Nations, Russia included.